It was a walk-off winner for the Atlanta Braves on a Wednesday. Orlando Arcia is the hero in the end. We'll cover that. We'll also talk about some injury news to Ronald Acuna Jr. and Manny Pena. And we'll also preview the upcoming series against the San Diego Padres on today's episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, where we are covering your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Check out my bio there and see where I am covering the game of baseball, including your Atlanta Braves in written form over at tomahawktake.com. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at lockdown underscore Braves and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. Make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube as well and be active in those comments and on the mentions on twitter love interacting with all of you there and talking about atlanta braves baseball and make sure that you continue to follow us wherever you get your podcast on youtube and thanks for making lockdown braves your first listen each and every day we post episodes daily five days a week monday through friday and are free and available on all platforms Today, we're going to be talking about the exciting walk-off winner from Wednesday night. What a great game that was as the Atlanta Braves split that series with the Boston Red Sox. Got some unfortunate injury news to get to as well. We're talking about who could step up in replace of that injured player, and we'll preview the Padres series coming up over the weekend in Atlanta. But let's begin with Wednesday's game, and... Look, Tuesday's game was an ugly one, uh, one that the Braves probably could have won, should have won. Uh, a couple of things go go differently here or there, but that grand slam was just too much to overcome. Came into Wednesday's game, you had to get a split over the Boston Red Sox, a team not playing particularly well coming into this series. And it is just a two-game series. And it's, like I said, usually a lot of times those end in a split, but honestly, a team the Braves, again, probably should beat um, with the way that they were playing coming in. We know they have some talent there. And, you know, Trevor Story, we seem to have unlocked him a little bit. Rafael Devers, you know, is a great hitter. So the Red Sox have, you know, hitters there. They just have not been performing for the most part. But the Braves had a chance to take advantage of them while they were down and couldn't on Tuesday, but bounced back on Wednesday to get the 5-3 to three victory and Orlando Arcia, the player of the game, wouldn't you know it, gets inserted into the DH spot. You had a, some people out there complaining, and I kind of missed this, but I saw some sarcasm from Mark Bowman talking about people wanting William Contreras to be in the DH spot or over Orlando Arcia for this game. Uh, look, Contreras may be a better option right now, but he's not going to start in that DH when he's the backup catcher. Um, that's just not going to happen Brian Snicker is not going to do that if you end up having to put him in catcher you lose your DH so kind of unfortunate situation for William Contreras because you would like to get his bat in there more often with the way he's been hitting but now with the Manny Pena news which we'll talk about a little bit later William Contreras is, is definitely going to be needed so that's why Orlando RC got the start at DH and boy did it pay off and we'll talk about the hits the home runs but what I want to focus on is the fact that Orlando Arcia had one at bat this month. In fact, since April 24th, he had one at bat. In 16 days, two weeks and two days, he had just one at bat coming into Wednesday night. That cannot be easy. Baseball players are routine, natures of of habit, and to not have a lot of playing time over that much time can't be easy to stay focused and stay locked in and huge credit to Orlando Arcia who gets the nod because Acuna is banged up, which again, we'll talk about that, about that a little bit later and comes through with not one, not two, but three hits on the evening. And obviously the two run Homer in the ninth inning for the walk off the big blow of the night. 
Just a, a, a great game from Orlando Arcia. Every ball that he put in play, four balls that he put in play were 88 miles per hour or harder. Three of those, 94.4 miles per hour or harder. So basically three hard hit balls on the evening. So again, I can't say enough about the performance of Orlando Arcia and the fact that he only had one at bat in the last 16 days comes in and did and does what he did on Wednesday night. Um, I I wanted to talk about that home run and something Jeff Rancourt mentioned, and I, I mentioned it on the postcast as well with Grant McCauley over on Locked On Sports Atlanta. But on at, before that home run, Ozzy Albies had a nice hit and great hit other way opposite field. Want to see him doing that more often? Punched it the other way. And that really became a problem for the starting, or not the starting pitcher, but the relief pitcher for the Boston Red Sox there. He was really worried about Ozzy over there at first base, almost airmailed one to the backstop. You could see that just the threat of speed on first base, what it can sometimes do to a pitcher who was clearly bothered about Ozzy and did not want him getting in scoring position for the Braves to potentially walk it off. And so he fell behind 2-0 to Arcia and then grooved him a fastball. And again, all credit to Orlando Arcia. Even when you know what pitch is coming, it is not always easy to square up a baseball in major leagues. And Orlando Arcia knew he was getting a fastball. He set on it and did not miss it. Absolutely hit a rope out to left field for the walk-off home run. So I wanted to mention that fact, that just getting speed on first base and what that does and again, you see it with Acuna too. Pitchers are so worried about him over there. And Ozzy's one of those guys. You know, Grant, me and Grant McCauley were talking about it after the postcast that, you know, Grant uh, talked to Ozzy early in his career and said that he thinks he could steal 50 bags. I don't ever see that happening because Ozzy just doesn't get on base enough, doesn't take the walks to do that. But he has that type of threat, or he is that type of threat, has that type of potential. And you could see what effect that was having on the pitcher there to set up that moment for. Orlando Arcia. And so now the question becomes, what do you do with Orlando Arcia? He, when he's been in this year, he has played well, hit the ball well. And the Braves tried getting him in the lineup, tried putting him in the outfield early on. That experiment did not go particularly well. I think he may have even been worse than Marcelo Zuna out there. But the bat's been good. And look, let's not get carried away. We have a, a pretty good track record for Orlando Arcia at the big league level. And he's Proven to be a you know an average to maybe sometimes even below average hitter at the big league level, but again I'm all I'm all for riding the hot bat. Same with Travis Demerit. You know he continues to swing the bat well. You know he had a two run homer on the night. So I think you got to find ways to get Orlando Arcia in there a little bit more. Look, I know what everybody's saying, thinking replace him with Marcel or replace Marcelo Ozuna with him. That's just not going to happen. Ozuna's going to get run out there. Every day, money talks. The Braves are paying him a lot of money. And the back of his baseball card says that eventually he'll get going, or at least the Braves hope so. Um, but he is struggling right now. I wouldn't mind seeing Arcia get a start at the DH spot over Ozuna every now and then. Kind of give Ozuna a break and also just to continue to, to play the hot hand right now uh, in Orlando Arcia. Kind of, kind of crazy to say that and the fact that he's had, what, five at-bats over the last two plus weeks now, but going back to earlier in April when they were getting him at bats, he was hitting then. So I think you got to ride that out, try to find some ways to get Orlando Arcia in this lineup. A couple more notes on the lineup in particular. It was the bottom of the order. Once again, for the Atlanta Braves that got it done, the seven, eight, and nine hitters were five for 11. Three of those hits obviously coming from Arcia with three runs and four RBI. Got the two home runs from, from RC, the two, the two run homer, or the two run homer from RC and the two run homer from Travis Demerit. So the bottom of the order, getting it done. And I talked about it on Wednesday's podcast. You know, it's and I wrote about it on tomahawktake.com. It was time for, for Snicker to shake up the lineup. And he did that. He moved Travis Darno up to the three spot. Uh, I had suggested maybe moving him to the four spot, but that's fine with me. Uh, I, that's fine putting him three, moving Riley down to four, try to lengthen that lineup a little bit. Of course, when he does that, Travis Darno has one of his worst games of the year, going over four with two strikeouts. But still, shaking things up, you know, he and Ozuna, Travis Darno and Marcelo Ozuna were the only players on the night 
not to reach base. I know Ozuna hit one 380 feet. I thought it was gone out the bat and just kind of died at the wall. But hopefully Snicker, you know, continues to, to tinker with the lineup a little bit, try to find the right combination. Hopefully Ozuna continues to stay in that five or six spot until he, again, hopefully gets going. So it was nice to see Snicker, you know, change things up a little bit, listening to the podcast, taking my advice here, uh, and trying to to move things around and, and put players in position to succeed and to score runs. And you put Dansby at the top, he was 0 for 3, but he also walked, stole a base, and came home to score on a big double from Matt Olson. So, again, it's just it's unfortunate that the middle of the order right now are all struggling at the same time. Riley's in a, in a week-long slump. Ozuna's in a, a three-week slump. Duvall's in a year-long slump. That's tough when the meat of your order, you know, is not hitting the ball particularly well all at the same time. Even Ozzy, you know, I know he had a good hit in the ninth, and he's been picking up hits here or there over the last week or so, but hasn't really got on a, a hot streak like we're used to seeing from him. So it's really hard when the meat of your order are all slumping at the same time and they'll get out of it they'll snap out of it eventually but it just makes it really difficult right now for snicker every day to try to figure out who's going to be hot that day how can he formulate the best lineup to try and generate some offense but it worked it was enough on wednesday and the braves come from behind to get the five to three victory and that's something else to mention as well seems like every broadcast now whenever the first team scores you hear the stat about the Braves and how bad they are when they don't score first and how good they are when they do score first. Well, hopefully that narrative is starting to change as the Braves fell down three to nothing on Wednesday night and came back to win that game. So a lot of great things happening there. Hopefully a lot of great trends for the Atlanta Braves going forward. A lot more to get to in this game and to give you that injury news that I promised. We'll get to all of that next. Our next partner has a product I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I have two young kids at home and I'm always they're always bringing home some sort of virus or whatever it may be when we struggle to stay healthy, especially through those winter months. I've been on it for a while now and I love it. It's doing wonders for my immune system. It doesn't taste like it's super healthy. It has kind of a, a mild tropical taste that I actually look forward to each morning. With one delicious scoop of Athletic Greens One, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. This special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, and aging, all the things that you're looking to take care of. Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated supplement routine to recover it cost him a hundred dollars a day so he created athletic greens after experiencing how difficult it was to create an optimal nutrition routine on your own athletic greens cost you less than three dollars a day and it's cheaper than getting all the different supplements yourself right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition it's just one scoop and a cup of water every day that's it no need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash MLB network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash MLB network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Ian Anderson started the game for the Atlanta Braves on Wednesday night, and it was kind of, you know, a typical Ian Anderson start. I thought he was solid, but not, you know, necessarily great overall. Five and a third, seven hits, one walk, three earned, and four strikeouts. So certainly not his best performance, not his worst performance. I talked about coming into this game with how fresh the bullpen was. Get the Braves into the, the fifth inning with the game, you know, close, and I feel – pretty good about their chances and that's exactly how it played out you know i think ian made a couple of mistakes there with some change-ups in that second inning he left one right down the middle to alex verdugo for a double and then left one i didn't think it was necessarily a, a terrible change up but one that maybe didn't have quite the movement you're used to seeing that trevor story got a hold of and pretty funny i was listening to the radio for the first uh three innings there and they were talking about Trevor Story and perhaps, you know, the numbers were inflated at Coors and he hasn't been quite as good in Boston. And then, boom, he hits a home run. So 
There goes an announcer jinx for you right there. Again, I think Trevor Story may have got unlocked a little bit in this series. He had another great at bat against Will Smith later in the game. Got out, but it was a great at bat by him. But a couple of mistakes there. Like I said, gave him another run in the next inning. Rafael Devers, I, he is a huge problem. Hopefully, uh, we don't have to, to deal with him too much more. Um, he ended up, Ian Anderson ended up throwing 96 pitches, 60 pitches for strikes. And particularly early on, I really loved the way that Ian Anderson was pounding the strike zone, something I want to see more of from him. Only one walk in this start. That's really good for him. So those were encouraging signs for me. Again, may not have overall been his best game, but I thought it was another very solid performance. Again, another start for him, you know, where he goes into the fifth inning with, at three runs or less. And I think you'll take that from Ian Anderson, Ian Anderson, you know, your third starter in the rotation. And I mentioned that bullpen being fresh, getting it to those, the sixth, seventh inning with the game, you know, close, either tied or Braves ahead or down by a run. And the bullpen was excellent on on Wednesday night, McHugh, Mentor, Smith, Jansen combined to pitch three and two thirds innings without giving up a hit. They did walk three batters, but they also struck out seven. So really good stuff there. And I got to mention the call. McHugh got um, three, two pitch bases loaded pitch below the zone. Probably should have been ball four. Definitely should have been ball four to give the Red Sox a run. But the Braves have had several calls like that go against them this year. You can think just most recently in a bat with Marcelo Zuna where all three pitches were clearly out of the zone and he struck out and the bat was pretty much just taken away from him. But that was a huge call in this game for sure. But McHugh gets out of it. And the bullpen's been great all year. You know, there's been a couple of blowups from some of the lower leverage guys. You know, you think about... Tyler Thornburg on Tuesday and a little blow up in the ninth inning there. Although Thornburg before that had been really good, you know, Newcomb earlier in the year. Um, you know, there's been some blow ups by some guys that you don't typically depend on, but for those guys, the night shift and beyond, you know, with O'Day and, and McHugh, they've been really good all year and they've been the bullpen that we hoped for the bullpen we expected from the Atlanta Braves other than maybe Tyler Matzik, which again, I thought his last outing was a little bit, encouraging but still you know he hasn't quite been that guy right now you know and i think you look at it from this game and the guys that snicker is comfortable using you know is McHugh, mentor smith and jansen i think those are your four top top guys right now i think you could use McHugh or o'day in that sixth inning role to try to bridge the gap to mentor and smith and jansen who have all been just incredible to start this season that's a huge advantage for the Braves, again, I feel like you get into the sixth inning with the game close, and I feel like it gives this team a really good chance to win that game. All right, let's let's turn attention to some injury news from Wednesday because had some big items there. Obviously, as you know, Ronald Acuna Jr. was out of the lineup on Wednesday with a groin injury. Braves are hoping that two days off of rest uh, get him ready for this weekend series against the Padres. I mentioned it after Tuesday's game, the fact that he did a lot of running in that game, had a lot of balls in right field that he had to track down, had that jump catch similar to the catch he made or the play in Miami where he tore his ACL. So I thought, you know, I even mentioned it then, I thought there was a chance maybe he would DH on Wednesday just because he did have to uh, exert a lot of energy running down balls in that game. Turns out he was a little bit more sore than that, and so they decided to sit him out. Hopefully nothing serious and, and not an injury that lingers. I know that can be a lingering injury, the groin injury, but hopefully that's not the case here. He gets a couple of days of rest and comes back ready to go. Can't afford to have him out anymore. The Braves really need him healthy and in the lineup all season long the rest of the way. But you got to understand, you know, there's going to be, Sometimes like this, where he's going to have some soreness when he hasn't played, you know, day after day like this for a while. So you're, you're, you're going to have to take some of this and he's going to have to get some rest days. You know, luckily he's had all the off days here lately. Give him another day. And again, hopefully he's ready for this weekend. I will say, and I joked about this on the postcast, it was nice to see him running out there to celebrate with his teammates, you know, on the walk off home run. I, I get it. That's not necessarily an indication that everything is OK, but. For me, I think at least a little bit shows if he's ready to run out there and jump up and down and, and pour water on Orlando Arcia that maybe he's not in too much pain, uh, and hopefully he will be back out there this weekend. 
Somebody who won't be back out there this weekend or for the rest of the season is a backup catcher, Manny Pena, who will be out for the rest of the season after an MRI revealed some ligament damage in his wrist that will require surgery. Unfortunate news for the Braves. I really loved the Manny Pena signing a great backup catcher, really great with the pitching staff, and he'll run into one every now and then, kind of exactly what you're looking for out of your backup catcher. Braves signed him for two years, $8 million in the offseason. He's actually making a little bit less this year, making $3.5 million this year and $4.5 million next year. So I don't know, maybe that works out a little bit better now that he won't be playing this year. Should be ready for spring training. Uh, hopefully he is healthy and ready to go next season. But this does provide a bigger role for William Contreras and touched on this earlier. I don't think we'll see William, you know, maybe get those opportunities at the DH spot. But we are going to see him catch, you know, two times a week at least um, on a normal week when there's not two off days. I think we're going to see him in the lineup a little bit more. So big opportunity for William Contreras. You know, I hate that he's only going to be getting, you know, two starts a week. But Travis Darno is one of the Braves' best hitters. He needs to be in there. But with the way William Contreras has been hitting the ball lately, you want to see his bat in there a little bit more as well. Also really helps that the Braves got Chadwick Tromp back, and I mentioned this a while back when the Braves had to DFA him, and they ended up getting him back and outriding him to Gwinnett. Um, that's some, he at least has some big league experience. If something were to happen to, to Darno or Contreras, you at least have him down there in AAA as insurance. And if you listened to my minor league update on the Monday podcast, you know that Tromp's coming off a monster week at Gwinnett. So some good depth there. Ed catcher that may eventually be needed, but hate that news for Manny Pena. Hopefully surgery goes well and we can see him back next season. All right, next I want to preview this upcoming series with the San Diego Padres, which should be a very fun and entertaining series. We'll cover that next. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting stats and sports info. Find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including this year's NBA playoffs and the start of Major League Baseball season. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information from live betting to playoffs, esports, and more. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. The Braves have another off day on Thursday. It's crazy to think you know, the Braves started the year with 14 straight games, and now it seems like they're having off days all the time. So make sure you send in your Twitter questions. I'll do a mailbag episode on Friday's podcast. So make sure you send in any Twitter questions to at LockedOn underscore Braves, and I'll be sure to answer those on Friday's podcast. But I want to go ahead and preview this upcoming series with the Padres Braves already played the Padres in San Diego early this year, split a four-game series there with them. One thing you can't let happen is you cannot let Manny Machado beat you. He absolutely destroys the Braves in his career. He's slashing 299, 370, 579 with eight home runs in 27 games against the Braves in his career. So cannot let Manny Machado beat you. Padres are obviously a very good team. Uh, they are also off on Thursday, so they'll come into Friday's game with a 20-12 and record, 6-4 and in their last 10 games. The Braves will see Hugh Darvish, Sean Manaya, and Joe Musgrove in this series. They saw Darvish and Musgrove back in the earlier series in San Diego. The Braves are set up nicely. You got Max Freeze, Charlie Morton, and Kyle Wright. Anytime you go into a three-game series with those three pitchers, you feel really good about your chances of winning at least two of those games. Hopefully, we're seeing Morton continue to progress and get better, and hopefully Wright has a bounce-back outing after his worst performance of the year. Musgrove beat Morton in one of those uh, earlier games in the season in what was an, uh, maybe one of the ugliest games for the Atlanta Braves. I know they've had a couple of those, but a 12-1 loss in San Diego. So hopefully that script gets flipped this time around. And Darvish was really good against the Braves in the last game of that series in April. So Musgrove and Darvish, he, they, those, they won those two games out in San Diego, the two games that the Padres won against the Braves, and the Rays will see them in that, this series. So hopefully better luck against them this time around. Freed did not face them out in San Diego. So hopefully he gets to shut that Padres offense down and pick up a win and continue the nice trend that he is on. 
A couple of numbers for the Padres team overall. They are eighth in runs, 21st in average, but eighth in on-base percentage. They, they have got drawn the most walks in Major League Baseball, which worries me because this Braves team has really struggled with walks, but not so much Freed and, and Wright. Um, Morton has at times. Wright has a little bit more lately. But this Padres team does take their walks. They don't hit for high average, but again, they get on base. They're 20th in slugging, um, 17th in OPS. They did just get Luke Voigt back, and he hit two home runs in his return. So that's a big slugger that they've added back to the lineup. On the pitching side, they're 14th in team ERA, 8th in starter ERA, and 9th in starter whip. So their starters have been much better than their relievers. They're also 7th in K per 9 by their starters and their bullpen is 24th in bullpen ERA, but they're 11th in whip, which tells you maybe they've been a bit unlucky, and they're 20th in bullpen in K per nine, so the bullpen doesn't strike out a ton of batters. So those are the numbers for the Padres coming into this series. Again, with Freed, Morton, Wright, you got to feel pretty good about your chances of winning two of those games at home and getting a series win and hopefully getting going for this Atlanta Braves team a good trend going forward, start winning some actual series for this Atlanta Braves team. So we'll preview that a little bit more, at least Friday's game on Friday's podcast. But like I said, I'll also be doing a mailbag. So send me in any questions that you have, but that will do it for this episode of locked on Braves. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at locked on underscore Braves. You can follow me at shortstop ball. Also make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast, subscribe to us on YouTube as well. And we will talk to you next time.